Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson on the joints of the body. This essential topic forms the foundation for understanding and identifying joints on a radiograph. In this video, we'll cover appropriate medical terminology related to arthrology, identify the joints of the body, and discuss joint classifications, mobility, and movement. Let's get started. Arthrology is the study of the joints, or articulations between bones. Joints allow bones to provide support for the body, safeguard internal organs, and facilitate movement. These joints are categorized as either functional or structural. The primary classification of joints is structural, but it is important to have at least a base-level understanding of functional joints. The classification of functional joints is determined by their mobility, or lack thereof, and can be categorized as follows. Synarthrosis, immovable joint. Amphiarthrosis, joint with limited movement. And diarthrosis, freely movable joint. Structural classification is based on the types of tissues that unite or bind articulating bones. Structurally, joints are classified into three distinct groups on the basis of their connective tissues, fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. Within these three broad categories are the 11 specific types of joints. Let's take a deeper look at each category. Fibrous joints lack a joint cavity and are held together by fibrous connective tissue. The three types of fibrous joints are syndesmoses, which are slightly movable, or amphiarthrodial, sutures, which are immovable, or synarthrodial, and gomphoses, a unique type of joint with limited movement, or amphiarthrodial. Examples of syndesmoses include the distal tibiofibular joint, sacroiliac, carpal, and tarsal joints. Examples of sutures are found in the skull. An example of gomphosis is the roots of the teeth that lie in the alveolar sockets, as these are held in place by fibrous periodontal ligaments. The next joints we'll discuss are cartilaginous joints. Cartilaginous joints also lack a joint cavity, are virtually immovable, and the articulating bones are held together tightly by hyaline or fibrocartilage. There are two types of cartilaginous joints. Symphyses, which are slightly movable, or amphiarthrodial, and synchondroses, which are immovable, or synarthrodial. Examples of symphyses include intervertebral joint spaces, the joint between the manubrium and body of the sternum, and the symphysis pubis. Examples of synchondroses include epiphyseal plates and the acetabulum of the pelvis. Now, let's discuss synovial joints. Synovial joints are freely movable, or diarthrodial, and are the most complex joints in the body. These joints are most often found in the upper and lower limbs and are categorized by a fibrous capsule that connects to the periosteum of the two bones and contains a synovial membrane. The synovial membrane surrounds the entire joint to create the joint cavity and produces a thick yellow viscous fluid called synovial fluid. This fluid lubricates the joint space to reduce friction between the bones. The ends of the adjacent bones are covered with articular or hyaline cartilage to permit ease of motion. There are six types of synovial joints that finish up the 11 total types of joints. These contain both the preferred name and a synonym for the name that technologists may also hear. Hinge, or ginglimus joints, uniaxial flexion and extension movement. They open and close like the hinge on your front door and provide no more than 180 degrees of movement. The interphalangeal joints of the fingers and toes, elbow, knee, and ankle are examples of hinge joints. Saddle or cellar joints, biaxial movement similar to ellipsoid joints, but the articular surface of one bone is saddle-shaped, and the articular surface of the other bone is shaped like a rider sitting in a saddle. The carpometacarpal joint between the trapezium and first metacarpal is the only saddle joint in the body. Pivot or trochoid joints, rotation around a single axis. One bone with a rounded or pointed surface articulates within a ring formed partially by the other bone the proximal and distal radio ulnar joints, and atlas and axis of the cervical spine are examples of pivot joints. Condylar or ellipsoid joints. Biaxial movement in two directions at right angles to each other, such as flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and circumduction. Examples of ellipsoid joints include metacarpal phalangeal joints of the fingers, the radiocarpal or wrist joint, 
and the metatarsophalangeal joints of the toes. Ball and socket, or spheroid joints. Multiaxial movement, including flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, circumduction, and rotation. The round head of one bone rests in the cup shaped depression of the other bone. Examples include the hip and shoulder joints. Planar or gliding joints. Simplest synovial joint with slight uniaxial movement. They have flattened or slightly curved surfaces. Examples include intercarpal and intertarsal joints of the wrist and foot. There is a mnemonic that can help you remember the six types of synovial joints. Healthy skeletons protect cartilage and bones perfectly. Or hinge, saddle, pivot, condylar, ball, and socket planar. So, in summary, joints are classified as functional or structural. It is important for technologists to know the functional classifications, but structural classification is the most common method. There are three categories of functional joints based on mobility synarthrosis, amphiarthrosis, and diarthrosis. Structural joints include three primary classifications and 11 specific types. Fibrous joints can be classified as syndesmoses, sutures, or gomphoses. Cartilaginous joints can be classified as symphyses or synchondroses. Synovial joints can be classified as hinge, saddle, pivot, condylar, ball and socket, or planar.